brain bit by bit, I will show images of brain damage and cephalopathy caused by hypoxia and ischemia in the neonatal period. In the previous brain bit by bit, I've shown images of oodogyria, which was caused by partial ischemia in term neonates, where the depth of the cell side was most vulnerable to damage. And if you look at the literature from the 70s and 80s, this was also called subcortical leukomalacia. If the ischemia is much more acute and profound in neonates, the areas with the highest metabolic rate are affected, so the ventrolateral thalamus and the corticospinal tract. Premature infants have different metabolism and different blood supply of the brain, so the periventricular white matter is most prone to damage, and you get a typical pattern of periventricular lycomalacia which I will discuss in the next brain bit by bit. So if there's acute profound ischemia, there's damage to the ventrolateral thalamus, posterior lentiform nucleus, and in the central region where the corticospinal tracts are. And these are flare images of a one-year-old who has suffered hypoxia and ischemia in the neonatal period. In the acute phase, it's important to detect, but much more difficult. Because to know what is abnormal, you have to know what is normal. And fortunately, we do not see many images of neonatal brains. And in the neonatal brain, the white matter hasn't been myelinated yet, so it has still very high T2 signal. And if there's hypoxia and ischemia, there's low T2 signal in the ventrolateral thalamus, corticospinal tract, and posterior lentiform nucleus. On T1-weighted images in a normal neonate, there's only myelination in the posterior limb of the internal capsule, so that should be high T1 signal. It is lacking in this case with hypoxia and ischemia, and there is high T1 signal in the ventrolateral thalamus and posterior lentiform. An MRI technique that makes it much more easy to detect ischemia in adults and in neonates is diffusion weighted imaging and there are many good educational videos explaining the physics of MRI so I will only tell what is important to know about diffusion weighted image to understand the image itself. In MRI the majority of the signal comes from extracellular protons as you can see here and a little bit of protons in the intracellular space. The protons in the extracellular space can move much more freely. And what you do with diffusion-weighted imaging is you give signal to the protons, then you apply an extra magnetic field, and the strength is quantified by the B value. So B2000 is stronger than B1000. And if you apply an extra magnetic field, the proton in the extracellular space moves away from the slice, and then you get the energy back. So if you have free diffusion, it's low signal on the diffusion weighted images, whereas if there's cellular swelling because of cytotoxic edema because of ischemia you give signal to the extracellular protons they try to move away but it is restricted because there is not enough possibility to move freely and then you get the signal back so in restricted diffusion there's high signal on diffusion weighted images so restricted diffusion on diffusion weighted images as you can see here and i told in the previous slide that there's also a little bit of signal from the intracellular protons so you have to subtract that in a 
mathematical way. And then you get the apparent diffusion coefficient. And if it's low, that's the distance that the proton can move. If the ADC is, is low, then it's truly restricted diffusion. So high DWI signal, low ADC, restricted diffusion in another patient with hypoxic ischemic injury in the neonatal period. The disadvantage is that it takes about 24 to 48 hours to develop cytotoxic edema. It takes some time for the cells to swell. So it might be false negative if you do it too early. And after seven days, the cells break down and then it pseudo normalizes. So this was the patient from the that I've shown before with bilateral hypoxic ischemic injury. And this is the diffusion and the ADC after seven days. On the left side, you can still see restricted diffusion, but on the right side, it has pseudo normalized. So diffusion is very useful, but it has to be timed wisely between two and seven days. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will discuss periventricular lycomalacia.